Look at Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me, and what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And so all these things come to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. God says, this is the one to whom I will look. This is the one to whom I will pay attention and look out after. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. One who is humble, one who fears the greatness of God, and because of that understands his own problems. And then one who pays attention to what God has to say. Humility is that motivating awareness of the greatness and the goodness of God that makes you want to be right with God and obedient to God and useful to God. This summer, we want to take some time to look at various character qualities that God can use. And we want to start with this matter of humility. God says that this is the kind of person he's going to look to. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, the question that you have to be thinking, that I know I'm thinking, is this. How in the world would I become humble? Well, jot down these three ideas, these three admonitions, and come back to meditate on them and think more on them on your own in the days ahead, throughout this week and in the days ahead. Number one, in order to grasp this matter of, of humility, number one, be aware of the greatness of God when you consider how great God is. What is God like? That's why we have the Bible. God is the main character. In the beginning, God, he's the main character of the book. And in this book, we discover so many things that are true about this wonderful, awesome, mighty God we serve. So study his attributes. Make a list of all these things you know are true about what God is like. Uh, build, build a biography of God. You start realizing that he, he's an awesome God. Chris Lungard, uh, in a book called The Enemy Within, says this, Even a hint of his greatness shows us up as grasshoppers, dust, and less than nothing in comparison. That's a reference to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 through 24. And as you're reading Isaiah chapter 40, you see listed there amazing attribute after attribute of this mighty God that is speaking to them. And we read in verse 25 of Isaiah 40, God says, To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Isaiah 40, verses 25 and 26. The more you're aware of this mighty God, the more you understand the infinite distance between us and God, and the more humility you will experience and express. We really need to think much more of this awesome greatness of our God, His holiness, His majesty, His wisdom, His power sovereignty. And with Paul, we can say, as he does in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Be in awe of the greatness of God. Isaiah said, in the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other 
and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Be in awe of the greatness of God. And secondly, be quick to admit your sin. Isaiah said in Isaiah 6, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Boy, is that true. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you see God as he is, and you understand the wonders of the gospel, you can't help but be broken over your own sinfulness. So be in awe of God and be quick to admit your sin. And number three, be impressed again with the power of the gospel. Milton Vincent said this in the Gospel Primer book. God deliberately designed the gospel in such a way so as to strip me of pride and leave me without any grounds for boasting in myself whatsoever. Nothing suffocates my pride more than daily reminders regarding the glory of my God, the gravity of my sins, and the crucifixion of God's own Son in my place. The gospel. Pride wilts in the atmosphere of the gospel. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who... Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of a man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. John Stott says this, All of us have inflated views of ourselves until we have visited a place called Calvary. It is there at the foot of the cross that we shrink to our true size. Do you want to have character that God can use? Start with humility. Be in awe of who God is. Be quick to admit your own sin. And be impressed again with the gospel. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you.